films that last have a special magic. Many of Universal's recent movies deserve to be called classics. The most popular motion picture of all time is the story of two friends from two different worlds. It's Steven Spielberg's beloved E.T. Hello and welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks, old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we will be taking a look at the history of Universal Studios' E.T. Adventure. A dark ride that opened at Universal Studios Florida on June 7, 1990, Universal Studios Hollywood on June 12, 1991, and Universal Studios Japan on March 31, 2001. As of April 2018, only the Florida attraction is still in operation, as the Hollywood version closed on March 14, 2003, and the Japan version closed on May 10, 2009. This attraction was suggested by Michael, so thank you for the comment. As always, if there's any attraction you would like us to cover on the channel, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. When you think of Universal Studios, one name comes to mind, Steven Spielberg. The three-time Oscar filmmaker is responsible for four of Universal Studios' most successful and highest-grossing films of all time, Jaws, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Back to the Future, and Jurassic Park. While audiences were amazed by Spielberg's ability to bring these adventures to the silver screen, this was only the beginning. In 1987, Spielberg signed on as a creative consultant for Universal Studios' newest theme park, Universal Studios Florida, to help work on attractions based on those films. Of all the attractions he was involved in, Spielberg was most hands-on in one in particular, the E.T. Adventure. Considered a classic by many fans and the only ride still operating at Universal Studios Florida that opened with the park in 1990, the E.T. Adventure holds a special place in many people's hearts. Now, the people who have brought you the magic of Hollywood for over 75 years want to bring it to you like no one else can. To take you inside the heart of a working motion picture and television studio to watch real filmmaking in action and share the secrets, the spectacle, the glamour that have made not only great entertainment, but entertainment history. Universal Studios Florida, premiering in Orlando, spring 1990. It's the greatest Hollywood production ever. In 1986, Universal Studios announced plans for a new theme park in Central Florida, Universal Studios Florida, with a planned opening date of December 1989. As previously mentioned in our Lights, Motors, Action, Extreme Stunt Show video, Michael Eisner, the newly appointed CEO of the Walt Disney Company, fast-tracked plans for Walt Disney World's own movie-based theme park, Disney MGM Studios, shortly after Universal's announcement was made. Many concepts of the new Disney park happened to bear resemblance to the original Universal Florida project, including a backlot tour and working movie studio. Rather than admit defeat, however, Universal rose to the challenge. It was quickly decided that the only way to compete head-to-head -head with Disney was to beat them at their own game. That meant a fully-fledged theme park with better rides, shows, and attractions than anything Disney had to offer. The only problem was that the Universal management team had no idea where to begin. Nothing of this magnitude had ever been built by Universal, and the price tags were staggering. However, a bit of luck came into play for Universal. Steven Spielberg's former college roommate, Peter Alexander, who was also a former Disney Imagineer, was working on the new King Kong figure that was to be added to the tram tour at Universal Studios Hollywood. Spielberg was impressed by the lifelike Kong and asked Alexander to work on design ideas for a Back to the Future ride. Also at the time, Spielberg's good friend George Lucas was working with Disney on Star Tours. Spielberg told Alexander, quote, You guys are pretty good at this. My friend Lucas told me only Disney can do this. He just took me on Star Tours at Disney. 
He said you screwed up going with Universal. They can never do a Star Tours. If you guys can do this, why don't you see what you can do with Back to the Future? Shortly after this conversation, Universal and Spielberg came to an agreement where Spielberg would be a creative consultant on such rides as Back to the Future the Ride, Jaws, and the E.T. Adventure. Inspired by Spielberg's classic 1982 film, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and the not-so-classic 1985 sequel novel, The Book of the Green Planet, the E.T. Adventure would open at Universal Studios Florida on June 7, 1990, and Universal Studios Hollywood in the following year on June 12, 1991. Unlike most of the attractions at Universal Parks that would largely cater to older audiences, the E.T. Adventure would focus on families with young children. In both style and technology, the E.T. Adventure would be similar to Peter Pan's flight. The custom-built ride system would feature platforms that were suspended under a track running around the attraction's show building. Universal called on the Sally Corporation to produce almost 300 animated characters and out-of-world plants and trees for the attraction. These would be controlled by a central computer that provided directions to the figures. These directions would be triggered by the movement of the platforms over infrared sensors. Show producer Jane Jackson was aided by Spielberg, who also starred in the pre-show. The score for the attraction was composed by the film's composer, John Williams, marking the first time a ride was given its own musical score. The attraction begins with a pre-show hosted by Spielberg himself, who informs guests that E.T.'s teacher, Botanicus, needs E.T. to come back to his home planet, the Green Planet, because the planet is dying. Only E.T.'s magical healing touch can save the planet and its inhabitants, so it's up to the guests to bring him home. Spielberg also tells the guests that they'll make their journey on bikes, and they'll need an interplanetary passport to get there. The guests then enter a second room where they give their name to one of Spielberg's assistants, which is programmed into a card that is used later in the ride. The assistants scan the name into the passport, which is given to the guests who then give it to the ride operators just prior to boarding the ride vehicle. The attraction at Universal Studios Florida originally featured a different pre-show which ran from 1990 to 2002. During this pre-show, Spielberg is in a movie theater watching E.T., munching on popcorn, and informs the guests that they have volunteered to be actors in a sequel to the film. The original pre-show was discontinued because Spielberg wanted to change it for the 20th anniversary of the film's release. After receiving their interplanetary passports, guests proceed through the queue, which is themed to look like a forest at night. In the forest, guests see scientists trying to track E.T., who has just wandered through the area. Every few minutes, E.T.'s glowing red heart can be seen racing through the trees as he flees in terror. Guests also pass by the speak and spell scene in the movie, while the letters H-E-L-P-E-T, aka Help E.T., come on the screen while its signature loud clacking is heard. Botanicus is also seen beaming down from his ship every few minutes, pleading for E.T.'s return. There is also a customized pine fresh scent created by the scent marketing company, Scent Air, that the queue is also famous for. The guests then enter the ride vehicle, which are made to look like bicycles whose handles come down as a lap bar. The bike in the middle of the front row contains a basket with E.T. hiding in it, which can be requested as a special seat for smaller children, giving them an unforgettable riding experience. As the guests are riding through the woods, they encounter Nassau officials and police officers who give chase and try to arrest them. As the guests are about to be caught, a police car appears out of nowhere, and just as soon as the guests are about to hit it, E.T. emerges from the basket, and the bicycles begin to fly over the city and then into outer space. From their bicycles, guests can see the miniature city below, including real moving cars and even a football stadium. The bicycles are then transported through a portal, when finally turned around, reveals that the guests have arrived on the green planet. Guests encounter Botanicus, who urges them to save E.T.'s friends. E.T.'s healing touch travels through the planet, reviving his friends, saving the planet, and beginning a celebration with many baby ETs. The last act lasts for about three minutes, and has a huge contrast to the beginning of the ride. The beginning of the ride is dark and scary, while the end is light and colorful with cheerful music and singing. At the end of the ride, guests pass an animatronic ET, who thanks them all by the name they gave to Spielberg's assistant at the beginning of the ride. Guests then exit the ride to ET's toy closet gift shop, where there are shirts, toys, and two classic ET photo op areas named ET and Me. The attraction was well received by guests of all ages, with many considering it to be the best Disney dark ride Disney never made. Unlike other attractions at Universal Studios, the E.T. Adventure only dealt with fantasy. Instead of the terror of coming face to face with a great white shark or a T-Rex, helping E.T. was a whimsical and fun experience for all ages. Many fans of the attraction, including Spielberg himself, thought it would be a ride that could entertain theme park guests for generations yet to come, which remained true until 2003.
On March 14, 2003, the E.T. adventure was closed at Universal Studios Hollywood in order to make room for its replacement, Revenge of the Mummy, The Ride. While there was never any official reason given to why the attraction was closed, attendance levels had been on the decline since its opening, along with the movie's lack of relevance to children who the attraction was targeted towards. When the attraction was closed, there was little to no fanfare or announcement for a reason. Rumors stated that Universal officials had been putting off telling Spielberg of the ride's closing due to the fear of him being upset and ending his relationship with not only the theme parks, but the movie studio as well. When officials did inform Spielberg of the closing, they stressed that the versions at both Japan and Florida would remain open. However, on March 31st, 2009, the Japan version closed for its replacement, Space Fantasy The Ride. The closings of both the Hollywood and Japan versions reportedly angered Spielberg. So when rumors started that Universal was thinking of closing the original Florida attraction, Spielberg did threaten to end all cooperation with Universal Studios. As a result, the E.T. Adventure is still in operation as of 2018, making it the only opening day attraction remaining at Universal Studios Florida. No one is sure how long the attraction will stay that way, however, as rumors state that the new Nintendo-themed area, Super Nintendo World, is slated for the Woody Woodpecker Kid Zone, where the E.T. Adventure is located. But as of right now, fans can still experience the mystical and uplifting ride that is the E.T. Adventure for the time being. For many, the E.T. Adventure holds a very special place in their hearts. While it might not be as sophisticated as the attractions of today, it still has something that many lack. Heart. It's one of the few attractions that does not rely on video screens, high-tech effects, or motion simulators. Instead, it's an immersive experience that relies on animatronics and props throughout the attraction, making guests actually feel like they're on an adventure with E.T. and helping him save his home planet. The heart of the attraction is demonstrated with one simple touch, hearing E.T. say your name. Universal works hard to create memorable moments for guests who visit their parks and ride their attractions, and for many, riding a flying bicycle with E.T. was that moment. Even if the future of the E.T. adventure may be uncertain, fans should always remember that E.T. will always be right here. So that is the history of the E.T. adventure. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. If there's any attraction you would like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, be good. E.T. E.T. My kids are wild about E.T. Now there's a whole collection of E.T. toys. This one talks. Oh. There's Elliot on his bike with E.T. and a spaceship. Here he comes. Aren't these little E.T.'s cute? Wind this guy up, he walks. Almost like the real E.T. My kids really love their E.T. toys. They actually believe E.T. lives in their closet. The E.T. toy collection from L.J.N. Thank you.